everyone, welcome to the Sew Along for our September subscription box. This is the first subscription box that we released and the goal of the box is to help you grow and enjoy your own homegrown food year round. In the box you'll have seen a little welcoming set um, which gave you a bit of information about the box with a little QR code to go to the website. That's where I'm going to post this video and it's where you can find any other growing tips and recipes for when you've grown your produce. We also had some little inserts for each variety in the box which gave you a little bit of information about the variety that we provided you with and then on the back it had full sewing instructions. I know some of you already started sewing your seeds but we did want to try and wait for the sew along until everyone had got their box and then we can all start sewing and growing together but if you've already started then that is amazing. In the box this month we did have some green manure i'm not going to show you how to do that today um, i just wanted to focus on the food items today um, so we have our onion tundra mazona radish white icicle lettuce rouge de ver pak choy tai sai and our spinach giant winter now it doesn't matter what what type of vessels you want to sow your seeds into we're going to use these module trays um, to do most of ours and then we're going to do the lettuce in the green small um, tray you might want to use a tray like that there's bigger ones big ones with bigger modules there's no point going too big with your pots we're going to use the modules and then we can keep most of the seeds together we've also got some organic compost i have got a miracle grow one um, and I don't know if you can just see on the bottom corner here is the OFG organic um, so if it's not excuse me, if it's not a soil association logo, logo you are likely to see the OFG organic and um, that just means that it's fully organic approved and there's nothing to worry about I did say on a post the other day there is a lot of compost in the garden center that looks quite misleading because it, it says that organic plant food but there's no actual logo for any of the organic certifiers so do keep an eye out for that the most important thing is that you've got a nice free draining compost for your seeds you can use seed compost if you want um, personally i don't actually like that i find it dries out too quickly and goes up. it just makes it too grumpy and um, so we're just going to stick with the organic one i've not tried this miracle grow one before so we'll see how it goes so to start with, we're just going to fill our chair with, I hope you can still see okay with that, I'm going to put some. We're going to fill our modules with compost, we're just trying, um, I don't know what the word is I'm looking for, try and declump it with your fingers if you can. You might have a little sieve which will work fine, but I tend to just if you rub it between your fingers, it's a bit like you were making pastry. Um, to get rid of any clumps. And there's no need to kind of push it down into the modules too much, just let it fall down, because you don't want to compact the soil too much. You will have also seen in your boxes that I provided you with some lollipop sticks for your plant labels. Uh, these are fully FSC certified, so um, you know that they can, if they are FSC certified, then they are sustainable. And I do find if you use a pencil, the sun's not going to bleach the writing too much. Whereas if you use a, bar, a biro or a marker pen, um, what you'll find is when the sun hits them for too long and um, the writing will disappear and then you still don't know what your seeds were. It is also helpful to write the date that you've sown your seeds as well um, just so that you know how long ago especially if you if you're successional sowing the date's always useful so that you know when you sowed them and when it's time to plant out. Please do let me know what you thought of your boxes so far. I know I've had a lot of nice feedback from them, but if you haven't um, been in touch, please, I'd love to hear if you, what you thought of the boxes. With all the rain we've had, this compost is a little bit 
wetter than I would have liked. But as you can see, we've just filled them up nicely and I've not pressed them down too much. And then we're just going to make a little dimple, not too deep, with our fingers. Hopefully you can see this okay. And then this is where we're going to sow our seeds. I do like these big trays just because you can get so much in them. So I think if you can get hold of them, often you'll find them in the garden centre. They sell them off um, quite cheaply at the end of the season. So they are just useful to keep all of your seeds together for each month. So we are going to start off with our onion tundra masona. So I'm not going to read the front out for you. Um, read that when it's in the box so now you've all got it to read yourselves um, but we do have the sewing instructions on the back so tundra masona is an overwintering onion please excuse the play noise um, so we can sew it from now until uh, till about october so we're going to sew them into the module trays and the instructions say for full-sized onions we can either sew one seed per cell or two or three seeds per cell to save space and if we want to sow them for spring onions, we're going to do five to seven. Why not try a mixture? So I'm going to do a mixture of both. I'm going to do a few with three seeds and a few with five to seven, um, so that we've got a mixture of full size onions and spring onions. If you want to do one, one per cell, that is absolutely fine. Um, it just means that you're going to get less, unless you want to do a whole tray. Um, but you will can expect a bigger onion if you do it that way. Onions can germinate from around 10 degrees centigrade, but for a quicker start, we want to aim for about 15 to 20. If you've got a greenhouse, they'll be absolutely fine in the greenhouse. If you don't have a greenhouse, feel free to pop them on a window ledge. Just make sure to pop something underneath your tray um, to stop any damp coming through and ruining your cake work. So um, yeah, everyone can get started whether you've got a greenhouse or not. It's not, nothing too um, technical. Your onion seeds will usually germinate in around two weeks. Sewing. We have our little seed packet. There's also full um, sewing instructions on your seed packet as well. And if you do have any questions, please just feel free to reach out to me. I'm always on Instagram or you can send me an email. And so inside the packet, we've got these little glassine envelopes just because the seed's quite small. So it just helps when you are sewing. I'm just going to pop a few into my part of my hand. So I'm going to do a half of, there's 12 rows on here, so I'm going to do six rows of just onions. I'm going to do three of those are going to be spring onions, and I'm going to do three for full-sized onions. But I, rather than doing one per cell, I'm just going to do about three seeds per cell for the full-sized ones. So we're just going to scatter three in. So as you can see, there's not really much to it. It's nice and easy, don't overcomplicate it. And then now we're going to do our spring onions. So we're going to do about five to seven seeds per cell. It doesn't matter if you do a few more or a few less, they will still grow. Obviously, if you want to sow the whole packet, you can. But if you want to, um, save some you can redo these again sort of late winter early spring so there's really no need to sew the whole packet at all with them being overwintered you know there is obviously a chance that you might lose a few if the, if it's a really cold winter so if you keep some back it just hedges your bets a little bit and for everything that makes it through which hopefully all of them will you can expect your onions around about a month earlier than anything you sow in the spring so you'll be grateful for that next year so, so that is about half the tray so i don't know if you can see i've still got plenty left in there to sow in the spring I 
also marked on each um, packet of seeds for the subscription. So if you have ever bought seeds from us, usually you'll see that I've say packed four and then the year of the growing season. Um, but for the subscription box, I've put packed four. So this month it's September. So I've put packed for September 24, and then you know which box those seeds came in. So that it's easy for you to refer back to if you're looking for your leaflets or if you're looking for them on the web page. I've done my little marker already, so I've just written onion, tender persona, and today's day, which is the 12th of September. I'm just going to pop those markers in now so that I know what I sewed. See it, and then we'll cover the seeds up at the end all together because it's the same for every single seed. So, next, we're going to do our spinach giant winter. These ones were quite the seeds are a lot bigger, so we didn't need to pop the clear, the glassine envelopes from the inside. So just be careful, just be careful when you're opening those. So we have our little insert for the spinach. And then on the back, on the sewing instructions, it says we can sew from August to October, and then again in March and April. So again, no need to sew all of your seeds. You can do them again in the spring. Um, you can direct sow your spinach, but we find it easier to sow it in trays or modules and then plant out later. This is particularly important this year as there are lots, lots of slugs around, as I'm sure you all know. Um, I also just find it easier if you do it into the modules, especially if you're doing them at home, um, if you're working full time, it's just so much easier to go and keep an eye on your seedlings in the morning when you're having that morning cup of coffee. So if you're sowing in modules, you can sow one seed per cell for growing large leaves, or for smaller leaves, you can sow two or three seeds per cell. If you sow in, in trays, then thinly scatter your seeds on the surface of your compost and then we'll cover with a fine line, layer of compost, but we're going to cover with the compost at the end. Um, so I'm going to do three rows of this. So we can either do one seed per cell or two or three. I'm going to do um, about three per cell and just have smaller baby leaves because that's how I enjoy my spinach, but whichever you prefer is absolutely fine. So I'm just going to scatter seeds. And then we have our pak choy. So our instructions say it, you can either direct sow pak choy or start it off in trays or modules. If you're sowing in modules, then sow two seeds per cell and remove the weakest, which is this, also the smallest seedling, after they have germinated. Or if you're sowing in trays, scatter thinly on the surface of the soil. So obviously we're going to do the modules, we're going to do two seeds per cell, and then once they sprout, um, the one that looks the strongest will keep, and we will get rid of the one that's not strong. So these are in a glass seed envelope as well, because they're a bit smaller. You might find it easier to scatter them directly from the little tray, but as you can see, they are quite small. So I'm just going to pinch them out with my fingers. It doesn't matter if you um, get a couple of extra in there, just pull out the weakest ones once they've sprouted. But do try not to over sow because it's just wasted your seeds. And again, you can do these again in the spring. And you might even get another couple of sowings in this year. I think the temperatures, it's been very cold this week and obviously windy and raining. Um, it feels like winter, hence the big winter coat. But they are full, it is forecast a good, nice week again next week. So you might get another couple of sowings in this year, fingers crossed. There we go, and that's all there is to it. So now we're doing to cover these up. I'll pop the gloves on again so I don't get everything mucky. And so again, just a light layer of compost, rub it between your hands. Just try and break down those clumps. So because we only made a light dimple, all we're doing is filling that dimple in with this compost so that the seeds are covered. And there is some good contact with the soil. Make sure that 
we give it a light pat down. We're not pressing the individual cells, we're just making sure that there's no loose compost there. And then we're just going to give it a light spray with the hose poke. So this is just a fine rose. And that is all there is to it. You don't want to use a heavy spray and um, because with the small seeds it just might dislodge them a little bit and um, so just a light fine spray is all you need to do so we're going to pop that tray into the greenhouse now make sure that the soil stays moist without over watering and then in a few weeks we'll start seeing seedlings emerging and then hopefully we'll be able to do another video on what to do next and um, so i'm going to show you how i am going to do the lettuce now so i'll move that one out of the way so we're going to do the lettuce in the smaller tray. We don't need to overfill this. I'd say about half to three quarters full. Again, we're not pressing it down too much, we're just trying to make sure we've got a nice even layer. And then our lettuce insert says, start the seeds off under cover in a small tray, scatter the seed thinly and cover with a light layer of soil. Gently water using a fine spray. envelope. So what I'm going to do with the lettuce is I'm just going to make a little drill with my finger. So just make a little line with the compost, just moving, moving some compost out of the way. So I'm just going to do two little drills. I hope you can see that okay. going to lightly scatter just a few I'd say there's maybe about 20 seedlings there per row you don't need to over sow um, they won't like it they like to be with their friends but they won't like it if there's too many um, so I don't know if you can see that is the sort of depth that I've been doing, the sort of spacing that I've been doing. So we've got two little rows and then we're just going to push the compost back over it so there's no need to add more compost to this. Just going to gently push it back. Make sure those seeds are covered so it's just a very fine layer as you can see. we've still got more than enough seedlings there that seeds sorry for more sowings over the winter and over the next couple of weeks pop our little label in and again just a very fine spray useful about these little green trays is that you can buy these little mini domes for them so it makes it like a little greenhouse which is really good if you are sewing inside on a window ledge you will need to just pop something underneath to stop the moisture coming through and damaging your paintwork um, but yeah it just acts like a nice little greenhouse so that is useful I'm going to pop these into the greenhouse outside it's not a heated greenhouse so if you've got a cold frame polytunnel wherever you grow your seedlings um, if you haven't got a greenhouse even the clear plastic boxes are really useful just lift them off the ground if it's cold uh, or frosty um, and make sure that you give, you give the seedlings plenty of ventilation just to stop any mildew or mold forming ventilation is really important even in the freezing temperatures just just to keep the airflow so if you are sewing in boxes cover them up at night but it'll be worth just loosening the lid during the day uh, maybe just weighing that down with a brick, obviously because they're so lightweight. 
the radishes. I'm going to do these in pots. I know on the instructions it did say to um, sow in drills, but I'm gonna do this in a pot at home and just show you how easy it is to grow in pots. Because they have taped roots, these the radishes that were in this subscription box, it's gonna be a bit like a carrot, and I find that carrots grow really, really well in pots. So I'm just going to spin you around now and show you the radishes. So I have this large terracotta pot that I'm going to use for my radishes. I'd say it's probably about 40 centimetres wide. So as we can see from our instructions, the radishes are fast growing, so we're going to sow them directly where they're going to grow. Make a shallow drill in the ground around two centimetres deep and thinly scatter the seeds along the length of the drill. Cover with a thin layer of soil. Now because I'm going to do these in pots, I'm just going to show you quickly. If so, if you're on the allotment, you will just make yourself a little drill like that and scatter your seeds along there and then just bring your soil back and um, because I'm going to do it in pots I'm just going to make some little holes not too far apart I'd say they're about five centimeters apart Drop a seed or two into each cell, each um, little dimple. I think it's always fun to do a couple of seeds sometimes when you're doing it like this and just see how they grow because this is how we learn. There's no right or wrong way, generally speaking. I think you've just got to find the way that works for you. And then we're just going to lightly cover, backfill those little dimples with the soil. And these are gonna be perfect because they're just gonna be near the back door. So I'll be able to keep an eye on them and then harvest them as soon as they're ready. Radish are really fast growing. Just a light spray with the water. So I hope you've enjoyed this little sew along. I'm excited to see your seeds get going. Uh, please do let me know if you've got any questions or if you need any additional help. Um, I'll be more than happy to help you.